بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. Today we're starting from uh, the thirtieth hadith. Okay. So the hadith, uh, this hadith is عن أبي ثعلة ثعلبة الخشني جرثوم بن ناشر رضي الله عنه. So عن أبي ثعلة خشني جرثوم بن ناشر رضي الله عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Uh, he said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, إن الله تعالى فرض فرائد. That Allah سبحانه وتعالى has made <coughs> certain things obligations فرائد فرض which is similar to the um, the pillars but فرض is even stronger. It's like um, something that has been يعني ما ثبت بدليل قطعي which has been affirmed with strong evidence where there's no doubt so for example the five pillars five pillars of Islam or the uh, so the five um, the five daily prayers that's why we say Salawatul uh, Khams Al Faraid so these five prayers are Faraid obligatory acts um, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has made certain things Faraid oblig obligatory and so the person should look after them فَلَا تُضَيِّعُوهَا Do not neglect them Okay, so don't neglect these faraid Look after them وَحَدَّ حُدُودًا And he has set limits فَلَا تَعْتَدُوهَا Do not cross these limits So in the Quran you always find Allah says وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّ حُدُودَ اللَّهُ Whoever crosses the limits of Allah So Allah has said limits that people should not cross For example, when it comes to marriage Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made For example, uh, haram for a person to marry You know, uh, relatives or people in the family he's made, he's made, for example, zina haram So the person should not cross this limit uh, The hijab, okay and there should be no intermingling or being in seclusion with a woman. This is limits. فَلَا تَعْتَدُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made these limits so we, we don't fall into the haram. Okay. وَحَرَّمَ أَشْيَاءَ فَلَا تَنْتَهِكُوهَا He's made certain things haram. Like drinking alcohol. He's made zina haram. He's made, um, for example, murder haram. He's made stealing haram. All these haram things, and we've learned most of them in the, we've covered most of them in the uh, book of the major sins. So these things a person should not violate. He should not go into these haram acts. He should not uh, basically, uh, he should not be practicing these haram acts. So it's a violation of, remember we learned in the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has a sanctuary. There's certain things he's made haram. Okay? So, if, if the person goes into these things, then he's, com he's violating these, uh, these limits and these laws. Okay? وَسَكَتَ عَنْ أَشْيَاءِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept silent about certain things. So these are the things where... Um, like it's not 100% clear if it's halal or haram Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So Allah has made a, a, a space for difference within these things Space for difference Okay With, Within these things so this ulama can debate And they can discuss And people might differ So it's, it's a difference which is accepted Although there's a truth But there's a Difference which is accepted And also certain things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Did not go into detail regarding them Or has not specifically Given us the ruling regarding them As a mercy for the people Rahmatan uh, lakum It's a mercy for the people Because if Allah Completely made it 100% uh, haram and clear Or vice versa Then it would cause people uh, Problems And a lot of people would be punished so غَيْرَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not leave these things forgetfully 
Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forget. فَلَا تَبْحَثُوا عَنْهَا So don't start to search for these things. Okay? So don't start to search for these things. So for example, there could be debates regarding these issues. Uh, but it's to go into the depth of certain things that have not been mentioned uh, clearly in the Quran and Sunnah. And the benefits are not really that beneficial. Like for example, a person might ask, did Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam like is his, is his parents going to Jannah or are they going to Nar? His mom and his dad. Okay. Um, these kind of debates. There are there are people who debate, but <clears throat> there's not really going to be um, a, a thamara. There is space for debate, um, but really, it's it's something Allah subhanahu wa taala hasn't really uh, mentioned. Okay, uh, really this would be regarding like laws that have not been specifically mentioned, have been relaxed or haven't been mentioned directly. There's probably other um, other better examples, uh, but certain things that it's not going to bring, bring a lot of benefit in going into detail and uh, researching. Allah alam. So this is a very important hadith which tells us that you need to look after the faraid, which includes the pillars of Islam. Uh, which includes any obligation a person has upon him and specific, especially also uh, the Salah and also to know that there are limits to stay away from these limits and not to cross them and to stay away from the Haram as well and also to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, mercy in the Sharia that he's made some differences not in the Aqeedah but allowed some differences in Fiqh okay for example, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, one time they were t- told by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to go to Bani Quraidah. They were told, uh, لا, لا يصلينا أحدكم العصر إلا في Bani Quraidah. None of you should pray Salatul Asr except in a place where the, these people are Bani Quraidah. So the companions radiallahu anhum, they differed. When they were on their way, Salatul Asr came. Some prayed when they... Uh, uh, when it was time for Salat al-Asr Halfway uh, Or when they were on the way there Others prayed when they got there So when they came back to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam You know He affirmed both of their opinions And he said both of you are correct Because you interpreted My my words And both of you will have uh, You'll get the reward Okay So it's in these cases Where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says do something and then if people do it differently and it hasn't been specified like in this hadith um, or in, in the Quran then that's a mercy because people would then use their judgment and act uh, accordingly like for example people like the companions who prayed uh, towards the Qibla they didn't know which way was the Qibla so some prayed in the dire- direction they thought it was the others prayed in the direction they thought it was as well when they came back to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, they made left. They actually left marks where they pray, directions they prayed, and then they find found out later on who was correct, and then they told Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said both of your salahs are correct. Okay, so there's space for differences in these cases. Allahu alam. Um, any questions on this hadith? Uh, we move to the next, the next hadith. Uh, this hadith is uh, on Abi al-Abbas, Sahar ibn Sa'ad al-Sa'idi, radiyallahu anhu. Qala, jaa rajulun ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is a companion, radiyallahu anhu. He says that a man came to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faqala, ya Rasulullah. The man said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, dulluni ala amalin, guide me to a good deed. إذا عملته if I do it أحبني الله وأحبني الناس Allah will love me and the people will love me so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said فقال إزهد في الدنيا يحبك الله وز إزهد في الدنيا have zuhud in this world and Allah will love you so zuhud means at the point of translation to renounce the world which means to Leave the glitters of this world 
and to not get, get allow your heart to get attached to the world. Actually, some ulama they give a it's it's translated as uh, to be aesthetic, but ulama they give an explanation and they say that zuhd is really to um, it's for the person if he wants to have the world in his hand or the the wealth and the, the wealth and you know worldly things in his hands in his possession, but not in his heart. Okay, so this is zuhd. Zuhd is when you leave. When you don't allow your heart to get attached to this worldly material. So for example, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one day, he was sleeping on a mattress. Not even a mattress, like uh, on the ground, it was a straw mat. So the straw mat left marks on his back when he got up. The companions, they were, they, they were saying, Ya Rasulullah, she will not get you a mattress and a pillow. The, um, the kings of Persia and Rum, they're sleeping on... You know these uh, beds, and uh, shall we not bring you something? And he said, "Mali wa dunya." Oh no, yeah, he said, "What is that?" That's probably another hadith. He said, um, "Yeah, he said that um, the hadith was this two hadiths." So. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said uh, Aren't you happy that they have the dunya and we have the akhirah? Okay, so Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made a choice He said we're going to have the akhirah and they can have the dunya Also the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith um, I am the parable of me and my life or you know a person living this world And how I am is like someone who was traveling and he slept under a tree to rest then he left it which means this world is just a place where you do your you, you just live and you eat and drink and take from it what you can but you continue your journey so the person who is a zahid is someone who only takes from this world the least and he doesn't enjoy it he doesn't he's like someone who's in transit basically so this is how the person is supposed to be not to always thinking about not to always think about money and to think about how you can become rich and on the other hand, neglect your duties or like for the person to always think about this dunya, which is something which shows how, what's important to the person. But you should think about the akhirah, okay? And know how much is prepared in, in, the, in Jannah for him. Uh, and also, zuhud is not, not leaving nice food and clothing, but for example, not to get lost in this, to become, become distracted by this, okay? And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said Wazhud Wazhad Fima And also um, Renounce or leave Don't get Don't let your heart get attached to What other people possess Then people will love you So if you always want to Take people's money Or you are competing with people And you have this jealousy um, Then this will cause people to hate you as well Okay so the person, if he's happy with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him and he's a, he accepts what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given other people, then he will, people will love him because he's not someone who's jealous of them, who has envy, who wants to harm them. So this is the best way for a person to, um, to earn the people's love, Allah's love and the people's love. Okay? So it's, it's to <coughs> live a life where some... Now they use different words, they say, for instance, even now it's become popular for a person to be a mini-millimist. Mini, mini, Mini-millimist, I think that's how they say it. <clears throat> is that people who live on the minimum. When it comes to cars, they'll just buy a normal car that does the job. Uh, when it comes to phones, they won't buy the most expensive phone, which is not necessary, like spend thousand, two thousand. But whatever gets the job done, uh, some people they buy a phone and then they want the next, the latest phone, you know. Uh, which is basically sometimes more than how much a person would make um, <clears throat> or more than he would need other phones do the job and then person would change that one upgrade and then when it comes to uh, cars he buys a car that he can't even afford and he's going to be paying in installments and things like that so always thinking about chasing the dunya and even people who become rich to realize that 
It's not about chasing the dunya and having the dunya in your heart, but it's about benefiting people and doing something that you love, which will um, basically make you rich. So not to chase the dunya. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you money, then enjoy enjoying the money, give it for charity. But zuhud is not that you know you start wearing clothes made out of really cheap clothes and you go and live in the mountains. That's not real zuhud. Real zuhud is that it's not in your heart. That's what zuhud is. Okay? Uh, is that clear? Is that clear? Any questions on that hadith? Okay, good. I just disconnected that. Okay, khair, inshallah, we'll continue to the next uh, hadith. Let me go down. Okay, the next hadith is also an important hadith. Um, one second, I'm having a problem with this, focusing this. This hadith is narrated by uh, an Abi Sa'ad, an, an Abi Sa'id Sa'ad ibn Malik ibn Sinan al Khudari radiallahu anhu. Uh, he narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, La darara wa la dirar. La darara, there is no harm. Wala dirar, and there is no uh, no harm done to others. So you can translate it in many ways. It's like a qaida, a principle that the ulama have used, which is used in fiqh as well. It can have many meanings. One meaning is la dirar, do not harm. Wala dirar, you will not harm. So you will not be harmed. So don't steal people's money. Don't swear other people. Uh, <clears throat> then you will not face the consequences of those actions. So if the person kills someone, he will be killed. He steals, he will be punished, and like that. So if you don't harm others, you won't be harmed. It could also mean la uh, darara wa la dira. So no harm. Don't do any harm this world in this world, and don't commit sins, and stay away from like uh, the major sins. Wa la dirar, and you will not be harmed uh, in the next life. Okay, so don't harm in, in the present, so you won't be harmed in the future. Is that clear? So you can have these meanings and other meanings as well, which is a very important qaida, which means a person should avoid, like there's there's consequences for a person's actions, so he shouldn't, he should stay away from harming people, okay, and harming himself as well, because there's consequences. Uh, we move to the next hadith. The next hadith is عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لو يعطى الناس بدعواهم if people were given according to their claims so what they claimed لو يعطى الناس if people were given بدعواهم according to their claims لا دعا رجال People will claim, or men will claim. So they, they will claim amwala, people's wealth, amwala qawmin, other people's wealth, wa dima'ahum and their blood. So which means, if people were, if someone says this person stole from me, okay, um, and people listen to him without any proof or anything, then. Um, they will start to claim more because they think they can get uh, people's wealth by making these claims. So a person will start to make more claims and take more cases to the court if he knows he's going to uh, win the case always. So he will say, oh, this person killed this person uh, from our family. Uh, so they will claim things that they, they don't deserve. Whether it's blood money, whether it's money stolen from them. But then how, the way a person can make a claim, as Muhammad tells us, is uh, to have proof. If the person doesn't have proof, then it's hard to make these claims. So Prophet said, لَكِنَّ الْبَيِّنَةَ 
but rather the proof is ala al is upon the claimant. So if the person makes a claim, he says, so and so stole my money, he will be asked, where's the evidence? So and so took my land, where's the evidence? So and so killed my son, where's the evidence? So there has to be evidence. Say if there's no evidence and it's brought to, to the court, then the judge can also judge according to uh, the oath of the defendant. So the, Pro- the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Wal Yameen, Wal Yameena, and the oath is ala man ankara, upon the one who denies. So let's say somebody makes a claim and he says, so and so stole my money. He will be asked, this claimant will be asked, where's your evidence, where's the proof? He will say, I know he stole it, but I don't have proof. Then what's left, the case is not dropped, what's left is we turn to the defendant. We ask the defendant, did you do this? Did you steal it? He would say, no. Then we say, okay, then you have to swear by Allah that you didn't do it. If he swears by Allah, then the matter is solved. If he says, I did steal it, and uh, then obviously that person will get his, he'll get his right. If he didn't, if he says, Wallahi, I didn't do it, then the case is dropped. Okay? So if the person is lying, if he says, Wallahi, I, I didn't do it and he stole, then it becomes Yamin al Ghamus, which is the oath, the lying oath where the person gets thrown into hellfire for that. And it's a major sin. We cover that in the book of major sins. So this is a very important qaida and principle that is used um, to judge. In the Muslim courts so for example nowadays there's, there's women who claim that they've been raped okay and there's people who are put into jail for years just for I have seen so many times people are put into into jail just because a woman claimed that she got raped and then she makes her own evidences and all of that and then later on 20 years later 10 years later they find out or the, the woman confesses and she says it was he didn't rape me so in Islam that would not happen. Why? Because the man, a woman for example, says, this man raped me. She would be asked, where's the evidence? She would be asked, where's the evidence? If she doesn't have the evidence, then this person can't be punished. The man would be asked, did you rape this woman? He would say, wallahi, I didn't. Okay? Then, um, he will not be punished because he didn't rape her. Okay, if there's evidence, say if she has a witness, so the evidence is our witness. Uh, it could be, for example, indirect evidence. Some score, some will accept CCTV. Uh, although in Islam, what is accepted is witnesses, witnesses. So, for example, they see witnesses see a person going into this lady's house. Okay. And then she makes the claim. They can use other evidences to try and confirm and find this, the get to the bottom of the case. Okay, but usually the person is made guilty with ev- with evidences and uh, with witnesses in Islam with witnesses. Okay, as you can see, for example, the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. When when the woman uh, she locked the doors, the mistress or the wife of the Aziz. The minister, she locked the doors and she said, uh, Hey Talak, you know, come to me. And she wanted to, she was seducing him, she wanted to commit haram. He said, Ma'ad Allah, and he ran away from her. Okay? He ran towards the door and then she grabbed him from the back and she tore his shirt. Okay. So as they got to the door, the minister opened, uh, her husband opened the door. And then she said, um, you know, aren't you, won't you punish the person who is trying to do something bad to your family? So Yusuf alayhi salam, he said, he gave evidence. And he said, if the shirt, actually the, it's, it's in, the, in the surah, in surah Yusuf, it's, it says, وَشَهِدَ شَهِدُ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا There was a witness in the family. So nobody really knows exactly who that witness was some people are saying it was a baby who was given the miracle of speaking so the baby spoke and said whatever in whatever case there was a witness and he used qara'in he used basically indirect evidence to say if the shirt is torn from the from the front then 
it is the woman's fault because he will be attacking her and then she would rip his shirt. If the shirt is torn from the back, then it's the man's fault, the useless fault. No, uh, sorry, if the shirt is torn from the back, if the shirt is torn from the front, it will be the man's fault. Okay, because he will tr be trying to attack her and she will try to defend herself. If it's torn from the back, that means the man is running away and the woman grabs him. So the case was that the shirt was torn from the back. So these are evidences that are used alongside what is in the Quran and that there was an, a witness in the house. A person who was a witness in the house. Wallahu alam. So it's very important that people judge according to the Quran and Sunnah. So no woman says, oh, I've been raped. And then a person gets locked up for, with, with no evidence. Wallahu alam. Okay. Any questions on that hadith? Any questions on that hadith? Zakallah khairan, so we'll be finishing there today, inshallah.